Sweden's Gripen isn't just another fighter jet rolling out of a hangar. It's the quiet storm that rewrote the rules of air power so violently and so unexpectedly that the world's biggest military contractors spent years trying to downplay its impact. For decades, the global narrative was simple. The more money a nation burns, the more unstoppable its air force becomes. Trillion-dollar programs like the F-35, multinational creations like the Typhoon, and political champions like the Rafale built their dominance on one idea. Cost equals capability. Nations were trained to believe air superiority was a luxury only the richest could afford. But then came Sweden, a neutral country of barely 10 million people, with no superpower backing, no giant military alliance behind it, and no appetite for trillion-dollar illusion. Out of necessity, not pride, they built a jet that shattered everything the world believed about modern warfare. And the truth it exposed didn't just shake the industry, it embarrassed it. To understand why the Gripen became a threat to the global fighter ecosystem, you have to go back to the Cold War. Sweden stood alone, positioned between NATO and the Soviet war machine, fully aware that if a conflict erupted, no cavalry would arrive to save them. So they adopted a doctrine the world still doesn't fully appreciate, a doctrine built on one assumption, fight even when everything around you collapses. This is where Sweden's legendary dispersal strategy was born. Instead of giant, vulnerable air bases, they developed hidden highway streets, forest clearings, and secret road runways buried deep within the landscape. Bass 60 and Bass 90 weren't engineering projects. They were survival blueprints. And every fighter Sweden built afterward was molded around this idea. The Gripen inherited that philosophy and perfected it. This jet doesn't need the billion-dollar infrastructure that the F-35 depends on. It doesn't rely on massive hangars, endless technicians, or fragile support networks. Gripen can take off from an 800-meter road, refuel and rearm in under 10 minutes, and get back into the fight with a crew of just six conscripts. No expensive base, no vulnerable assets, no logistical chains stretching across continents. That's when you start to see the real magic. The Grapen wasn't engineered to look impressive on paper. It was engineered to survive. And that design philosophy turned into a weapon the day Gripen began appearing in multinational exercises. It wasn't the stealthiest. It wasn't the fastest. It wasn't the most expensive. But it was the smartest, the most adaptable, and hands down the most efficient machine on the battlefield. In NATO drills and red flag exercises, Gripen started doing something terrifying. It quietly racked up simulated kills against some of the most advanced jets in the world. F-15S, Typhoons, Rafales, and yes, even stealth platforms like the F-22, found themselves outplayed by Sweden's little budget jet. Because Gripen wasn't fighting with brute force, it was fighting with information. Its advanced data link created a level of networked warfare far ahead of its time. Gripen pilots described it as flying with extra eyes. Opposing pilots described it as being stalked by something they couldn't see. Gripen became a digital ghost, leveraging electronic warfare so sophisticated that radars went blind. False targets appeared out of nowhere, and enemy aircraft found themselves overwhelmed not by missiles, but by confusion. That's when the industry's biggest secret cracked open. For decades, the fighter jet world revolved around price tags. The higher the cost, the stronger the narrative. But Gripen exposed the truth. Air superiority is not bought. It is engineered intelligently. And that scared the companies that built their empires on billion-dollar projects. Here's why. The F-35 program isn't just a jet. It's a geopolitical lock-in system. When a country buys it, they buy into decades of American software control, dependency, and maintenance monopolies. Upgrades cost billions. Spare parts cost hundreds of millions. Everything is centralized, restricted, and wrapped in political strings. Many nations don't own their F-35s. They rent them. Gripen broke this cycle. 
Its open architecture system allows nations to integrate their own weapons, modify their own software, and maintain the aircraft without foreign permission. When Brazil selected Gripen over the Rafale and F-A-18, it wasn't just a defense purchase, it was a declaration of sovereignty. They gained technology transfer, local production, and independence. Hungary and the Czech Republic followed the same logic. South Africa chose Gripen because it could operate from remote bases with minimal support. Perfect for the African theater. This was the threat giant contractors feared. A jet that didn't create dependence. And when you look at its specs, the fear becomes justified. Gripen carries the Raven ES-05AESA radar, offering wide-angle scanning that outperforms many Western systems. The Meteor missile gives it unmatched beyond visual range reach, turning the jet into a long-range predator. Its IRST system detects stealth aircraft passively, meaning Gripen doesn't need to reveal itself to track you. The GEF-414 engine grants it the performance of a twin-engine fighter with the cost efficiency of a lightweight design. And then comes the electronic warfare suite, often described as a flying jammer that can scramble enemy sensors and warp battlefield perception. But none of these specs are what terrify the industry. What truly exposes the billion-dollar illusion is that all this capability comes in a package designed to land on a highway be serviced by conscripts, and fly for a fraction of what its rivals cost. Gripen's flight hour cost is roughly one-third of an F-35's. Its purchase price sits around $60 to $70 million, while its competitors soar to $120 to $150 million or more. A small nation can afford twice the fleet for the same budget and still maintain them without collapsing their economy. Gripen proved something the industry never wanted to admit. Modern air power doesn't have to be ruinously expensive. Smart design beats expensive design. And the evolution didn't stop there. The Gripen E pushes the platform further, featuring upgraded radar, enhanced IRST, next-gen electronic warfare, and full meteor integration. Saab's roadmap even includes loyal wingman drones and AI-driven combat management, tying future air warfare directly into Sweden's efficient, survival-based philosophy. But perhaps the most fascinating edge Gripen offers isn't technological at all. It's psychological. Imagine being a pilot in a billion-dollar jet, going up against an aircraft that costs one-third of yours, yet performs on equal or superior terms. It's demoralizing. It ruptures your confidence. It forces you to rethink every assumption you have about air superiority. Gripen turns that mental pressure into a weapon. Enemies waste time, fuel, and tactics trying to pin down a jet that can vanish into forests, appear on highway strips, or relocate faster than satellite surveillance can track. Traditional fighters defend massive bases. Gripen defends an entire country. It becomes a phantom force, unpredictable, agile, and impossible to shut down with a single strike. And every time the world sees this tiny, cheap, adaptable jet dominate exercises or secure international deals, the same message echoes through defense ministries everywhere. The era of bloated, overpriced illusions is ending. The future belongs to intelligent, efficient, sovereign air power. Gripen didn't just change how jets are built, it changed how nations think. And in that sense, it may be the most revolutionary fighter of the 21st century.